and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about platform events and more specifically we're talking about how to use platform events within Salesforce um, using flows. But before we get into that, I want to very quickly explain uh, what are platform events and what is event-driven architecture. It is somewhat important to understand this concept before we actually dive into platform events. So just bear with me for a few minutes here when I try to explain this uh, architecture. So in a very uh, highly simplistic level, let's take an example where uh, we are monitoring a courier system. So let's say you ordered a package from Amazon and when the Amazon delivers the package, you get notif notified. So let's say, for example, that delivery system here is the event producer. So your UPS buses or the trucks have something that generates those events. So, so you, in this case, your your trucks, UPS trucks and all, they are producing events with every location. So it's in transit, it's in your city, it's in your state, and so on. Um, and imagine there is a bus in between, which is just taking that information in. So at this point, we're not concerned what's happening with those, with those messages that it's getting. So uh, these trucks or wherever your package is, they're saying the package has reached this facility. Our package has been shipped package has been you know in your state wherever that might be so it's just sending the messages and after that it doesn't care what happens once it emits that message out or the events out the event bus just takes it and what other the other side of the section what they can do is monitor for it so let's say you subscribed for those Amazon messages so you want to get notified every time something happens to your package. Maybe you don't really care about if it came to your state. You only want to be notified when it is shipped and when it is about to be delivered. You don't care about anything else. Then what you will do as an end user here, you will subscribe to those specific events that you care about. So for in your case, it might be you want to, like I said, get notified when it's delivered. So that will be the event you are interested in and you can subscribe to it and then you will get that event on your phone or on your app. So that's kind of a very basic uh, explanation on the event-driven architecture. So now how, that, how does that help you in Salesforce? So Salesforce not only lets uh, you integrate between two systems. So in Salesforce example, so I'm just gonna have here, for example, you had an object in Salesforce, um, let's call it a contact record, and there is a separate system and the separate system is actually interested anytime the contact email is changed. So anytime the contact email, and you have tons and tons of contact, it doesn't care about if the contact first name changes. But this other system cares about, you know, the email changes. So what you can do is in Salesforce, and I'm going to show you how, um, create create a flow which can on an email update in contact create an event so the flow will look like this so you can actually create a flow so let's say this is the flow what it will do is it will create when I say create event meaning it will publish the event okay and that's more fancy way of saying that event has been created so usually they call it publish event so that's what we can do here and the other system the third party system will then be able to subscribe for that event so in this flow as we know that flow can do this so you can add a condition where only fire this event when the email is changed don't care about name changes only email changes so you can make that flow work in a way that it only publishes when the email changes and on this side it will be subscribed for those events and there will be a bus in between uh, according to event driven architecture and so they'll get that latest email onto the second uh, system okay so, but in today's uh, video, we're not going to look at actually two different systems. We're going to look at within Salesforce. So here's our use case for today.
in our case both publisher and subscriber are salesforce so these are the same because we are looking at into within salesforce now why would you need to use publisher and subscriber event in salesforce couldn't we just use our regular tools that we use like for example if you want to create a contact on creation of account you can just use a directly a flow you don't need to use subscriber and publisher in that case but there might be scenarios where you want to create a contact on creation of a creation of an account and when that contact gets created you probably want to do something else so there might be some other object related to account and that other object just wants to listen for when the contact is created then you want to do something else and it's also easier to maintain rather than having tons of flows or you know step-by-step uh, -step flows to do something in a one long running transaction it's easier and it's also good for the system to kind of listen for that thing to happen and then kind of do it after the publish of the event so our use case is quite simple and it is uh, similar to the video i made two weeks ago or so where we want to assign permission set to a user when the opportunity owner changes so anytime i somebody changes the opportunity owner we want to assign permission set to the new opportunity owner and we can do this using process builder launching flow and having time based action and we know why we can't do it in one single flow is because you cannot insert a, a system record along with non setup record so non setup record meaning opportunity setup record meaning user or permission set so otherwise you'll get a mixed dml error so in this case we cannot have a flow that just fires on opportunity change and then just assigns the permission set to the new owner without any issue you'll run into mixed dml errors which is why what we want to do is use platform events for that so let's i want to first uh, just to set the stage here just want to explain what that looks like so got permission set here actually we got opportunity here so on the change of opportunity what needs to happen uh, we need to create a platform events just looking back to our original example this is what we're doing opportunity created it generates a platform event and then imagine there's an event bus here the next step is the something we don't know what that is yet something will happen to the permission set and permission set will be assigned to that opportunity owner because it will listen for this event so anytime opportunity owner changes there will be a platform event generated and there will be another flow that will listen for that platform event and assign permission set to that opportunity owner okay now we've been talking about platform events now let me show you what that actually looks like if we go to setup just start typing platform events and here i'll create a new one uh, so I'm just going to call it permission set because that's what I'm trying to do or assign permission set. Just name it something uh, that you understand. So as you can see, this is very similar to when you're trying to create an object. So it's really an object record like we talked about. So this is an object record. I'm just naming it something, giving it publish behavior publish after commit because I only want something to happen after this event is committed and deploy it save it and then what does the platform event need in order to gen assign the permission set obviously in order to assign the permission set we need the owner ID of the opportunity so I'm just going to make a placeholder we'll see how we'll populate this but for now we just say text field hit next and I'm just going to say opportunity new owner because we will need that ID in order to assign the permission set to that new ID I'm gonna save that so that's it that's our platform event 
just like creating an object. Now um, we go to flow, create new flow, and here it's going to be a record triggered flow first because we are trying to trigger something on create of an opportunity or update of an opportunity. So here we're just going to say record is updated. We don't really care about creation at the moment. Or we can just say created or updated after the record is saved. And the object here is opportunity. And I'm just going to say all the conditions for this one because the record prior is not available here. And in this decision, I'm going to say check op owner and label check owner is changed and record dot opportunity dot owner id does not equal to record prior opportunity dot owner id okay so basically we're saying the owner is changed hit done so what should happen after this happens? We want to create record. Creating platform events is just nothing else creating records. So name it that and use separate resources. And here, if you start typing permission set, select object permission set, you should see all the platform events. The only difference is you'll see underscore underscore E here instead of C. So we are seeing assign permission set here. I'm just gonna say that and opportunity new owner. That's the field that we created on that event. We're gonna pick opportunity, not prior actually. We need the new opportunity owner. So record dot owner ID. That's it. So that is creating the platform event, which is which is easier way of saying publish. So here if you say publish, that's the same thing basically. So we're publishing the platform event. Now let's just save that. Opportunity, save that and activate. So we are not done yet. We we still have another step to do. So how does the permission set get assigned? And I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Uh, permission set assigned. So here we're saying subscribe to that event because it needs to know when the permission set, when the opportunity owner changed, platform event got created, now the permission set assignment needs to happen. So in order to do that, we go to flow again and create a new flow. So, and this is where a new thing comes in, where it's like, we can't use record triggered flow because that's not really a record. We're gonna have to use platform event triggered flow. So when you click on that, we can choose platform event. And that's the only option you have in there. So you just choose which platform event you wanna subscribe to. We will subscribe to assign permission set. It done okay so now what do you want to do next we want to assign the permission set meaning permission set assignment record um, and I explain in more detail about that object feel free to check out the other video but permission set assignment is a record which is a junction between permission set and the user so first we will need the permission set itself so we get perm set so because we don't want to hard code IDs we're getting the permission set here. Let's go permission set and object is permission set name. So you always want to query the permission set instead of hard coding it. I think my name was test perm. Let me just reconfirm that to make sure we have the right permission set name. Yeah. So I was wrong. I will copy. No, I was right actually. So okay, name equals permission set. So that will give me only one record with that specific per permission set name. 
So great. So I got the record. Now what? We need to create the permission set assignment record. So insert permission set assignment. So how many records we want to create? Just one is fine and use all values from the record or use separate resource. I'm going to pick use separate resources because I, I want to define them here. So let's say permission set assignment and the values will be permission set ID. We know what that is. We just query it for that permission set get from dot ID. And then another field will be owner, sorry, assignee. So the assignee comes from the opportunity owner and that will come from the current flow, which is the record because we copied the owner ID from the opportunity to the permission, uh, sorry, we copied the owner ID from opportunity to the platform event. And if we do record dot owner, opportunity new owner, that should have the new owner ID. So then this flow can look at that and assign the permission set. Save it and perm set. Speaking of subscribe, if you like my content so far, feel free to subscribe for this channel. All right. Uh, so we're going to activate that. Do not forget to activate. That's active as well. So now let's test. I'm going to remove all this permission set so we can test it. So nobody has that permission set assigned. Now let's go to the opportunity and I'm going to change the owner to support. Change owner. And what that should do in the back end, so when the owner is changed, it's generating that event and passing that owner ID onto that event. And then the other flow is actually looking at that new platform event created and then assigning the right permission set to this owner ID. Now let's see if that actually worked. Uh, refresh the screen. And there we go, we have the user support. I hope that was helpful in terms of introduction to platform events and I am also trying it out as, along with this video. So uh, as I learn more about this, I'm definitely going to share more videos on this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions.